Hi guys, I wanted to give a quick update on the timing issue I mentioned in the last VGA video. Uh, this is just going to be a quick update because I haven't solved the problem, um, but I don't want to dwell on it too long because this weekend I really want to get back to adding colour back into the VGA circuit. So here is where we are with that. Um, I'm running the standard demo that I've been using here with the circles and uh, I've set up the circuit with a bunch of oscilloscope probes as you can see um, we have one here which is sampling the 2 MHz sorry, which is sampling the uh, divided by 2 clock signal uh, there's one over there which is uh, sampling when the uh, D flip-flop the 8-way D flip-flop latches from RAM and then over in the far corner over there we're also sampling the CPU clock on the left and on the right we're sampling the write enabled signal that uh, happens when the CPU tries to write video memory. So I'll show the circuit diagram for that in a sec but um, what I'm trying to do here is diagnose some of the timing issues I was seeing. Uh, some of them didn't really, really make sense and the other issue was that when I was trying to set the uh, timing for the shift register over here, um, particularly on its, its parallel load signal, I ended up just sort of winging it and sticking in a NAND gate and then fiddling around with inverters until it sort of worked. And I wasn't very comfortable with that because it probably won't work too well in the long term. It is okay for now. Um, the result was pretty good. But I want to understand the timing better. And in particular, the reason I winged it there was that when I looked at the circuit diagram, it just didn't make sense. Um, so we should probably have a look at the circuit diagram next. So let's have a look at that. So here's the circuit diagram. I'm just showing this on my laptop screen. Um, it's, this is literally just the web page from my GitHub at the moment. So this is the main timing circuit here, um, which kind of takes a few inputs, such as the, the, the read versus write signal, uh, whether it's a high address that would normally go to ROM, we're also sending the ROM output enabled to the, um, to the sort of 6 over 2 side of things from here as well. Uh, in particular though we have these these two D flip-flops and this one on the left generates the CPU clock signal and also the output enable signal for the uh, video address counter. So when, when the CPU clock is low we, because it's an inverted output enable, we enable the uh, video address counters to start providing addresses to the video RAM. Um, when, when the CPU clock is high, we, we cut them off in case the CPU wants to do a write. And if we're in this combination of the CPU clock being high and doing a write to the right amount, to the right bit of memory, uh, then we allow the CPU to drive the video address bus and the, data, and the video data bus. And we also have this second D flip-flop here, which is basically controlling the write enable signal. That's, just, that's what it's there for. Um, and there's a certain timing I tried to get with this uh, to make sure that the write enable goes active towards the end of <coughs> excuse me towards the end of the phi two period, uh, but not beyond it. So that's kind of what the what the set here is controlling. It makes sure that write enable it's an inverted signal, so it makes sure write enable gets set uh, very quickly once clock four changes state in a particular way. Now we also have the uh, 8-bit latch, 8-bit D flip-flop here that I mentioned first of all in terms of the probes and you can see its clock signal there comes from an inverted what I call clock 4. When I, when I say clock 4 and clock 2 um, and indeed clock 1, what clock 1 is the standard VGA clock which is 25.175 MHz. Uh, uh, clock 2 is the result of dividing that by 2 in, um, in a timer, um, in, in a 4-bit counter chip. Um, and that ends up, this is important to understand, so clock 2 ends up rising, well clock 2 ends up changing state when clock 1 goes up and clock 4 ends up changing state when clock 2 goes down. It's important to remember those are the wrong way around in a sense and it's because, the, it's because this counter chip is triggered by a positive edge of its input clock but the different stages of the counter chip are actually essentially triggered by the the falling edges of the previous stages clock. It's important because that's really what confused me last time round and led me to just wing it. And it was all about this D flip-flop. 
the thing is, it is sampling clock 4, but it's doing it at the falling edge of clock 2, because this is a, a, an inverted clock 2 going in here. The fact it's inverted means it is coming through an inverter, which is not, not, not shown as part of this part of the circuit diagram. But that does mean there'll be, there'll be a slight delay on that clock input. But the thing is, we're, we're nowhere near meeting the setup requirements for this D flip-flop. This the clock, clock 4 will, will have changed, and then very soon afterwards, or, or maybe coincident with it, I don't know, clock 2 will also change, um, depending on the delay in the inverter there. And, um, and I wasn't sure which way that was going to end up coming. I mean, it, the result I'm seeing is actually very consistent, um, but I wasn't sure what it was going to be. Um, and I, I wasn't comfortable sort of planning a new addition to the timing circuit around this thing that I didn't really understand how it was even working already. And I made some attempts actually on the last video and, e and indeed just before filming this to, to actually fix this and change the way that's timed. Um, but that didn't go very well. I had some success with it, but yeah, at the end of the day, all of these gates and things like that, the, 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 the delays from them, I mean these ones up here, the, the gate delays don't matter too much. Um, but there's a kind of a critical path from some clock signals here through this D flip-flop, which then goes through through this NAND. And I'm, I'm using an AHCT here, so they, they are very fast and they have a very sharp rising edge, uh, which may help here. But th th we then go through this D flip-flop, which is also... This is incorrect in the diagram. I mean, this says it's clocked on uh, the inverted clock too. I think that's not actually the case anymore. Um, but there's, th there's some critical timing going on here. Um, and, uh, yeah, as we'll see on the oscilloscope in a sec, um, it doesn't necessarily fully make sense. So let's have a look at the oscilloscope then, now that we've sort of talked about the, this. So, I mean, the, the, the key things the oscilloscope is monitoring is the CPU clock, which is essentially the output of this D flip-flop. It's monitoring clock 2, not the inverted clock 2. Um, so bear that in mind, I guess, on the traces. It's monitoring the write enable signal. And it's also monitoring clock 4, which is the same as the thing which is... Uh, driving the D flip-flop down here. And that, that monitoring of clock 4 is really just as a reference point. So here is the oscilloscope. It's been on throughout this. I hope it's not been too noisy. Uh, <laughs> it has a bit, fan, a bit of a fan in it. Um, so this is set to trigger on the red line, which is the right enable signal. And all, I, all I do is I set it to trigger on that, and then I just run the, run the program, and I hope I get a decent capture out of it, which I usually do. So that's nice. Um, <clears throat> so starting from the bottom, the yellow line is the, uh, the, 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 the the clock divided by two signal. The blue line is the CPU clock. The red line is the write enable signal, but this is sort of inverted upside down. I've, I've sampled the wrong end, the, the wrong polarity there. So, but the, this just means that it, the write enable was actually low during this period here. And the one at the top is uh, the uh, the clock signal for the for the latch, which is which is clock four. Um, so the latch or the D flip flop rather is uh, is is capturing mem uh, is capturing the memory contents on the rising edge of that signal. So what's going on here? What's the problem? Um, well, there sort of isn't a problem because this actually works. Um, one thing we do expect is that uh, during during phi two being high here, we do expect the right enable pulse to come towards the towards the end of that period. That's because the uh, counters only output to the video address bus once once phi two is high, and I want to make sure that the RAM has had enough time to kind of accept that address before we start asking it to write any any values. Um, so I don't want to do that from the start of phi two. So that that gets delayed quite a bit here. It's a rather short pulse here. Um, how long is that? That's probably about 30 nanoseconds and it might be too short for this RAM because this, this is 55 nanosecond RAM so the cycle time should be 55 I mean 30 is a bit borderline for it, it might be okay I haven't checked the data sheet on that um, It's important that this right enable pulse does end uh, once phi 2 ends as well and it's again a bit borderline there I mean the, the edges on that phi 2 signal are not good um, which is another problem here. I, I, I don't know. I don't really know what's going right or wrong with this at the moment, and um, I've come to the conclusion that I don't really want to solve this in its current form. Um, what I'm probably going to do is get a 
Gal, like the um, ATF 16V8 or something like that. I've got a few of those. Um, I really want to just put this into a Gal and then have it synchronous so that um, I can have the VGA clock coming in. Um, I can know that all of the various outputs from this circuit. I'll, I'll essentially take the whole of this part of the circuit here and make it make the gal do it. And so we're going to end up with an output enable if I to a right enable um, the CPU bus signal that's just off the top of the screen there. The wrong output enable. All of these things, or maybe not that one. I don't know because that's part of the Ben Eater circuit, really. That that gate there. Um, all of these things, I can ensure that they always change on the rising edge of the of the main clock for example um, and I won't have to worry about uh, gate delays and things like that causing them to change at slightly different points um, and I can also I'm hoping guarantee that they'll have similar kinds of edges because as you can see here the the blue line I mean it is coming from one of the D flip-flops um, but I'd hoped for a bit of a tighter edge on that. You can see that the, the yellow, which is coming from the clock, and the green at the top, which is also coming from a clock. Actually, the, the green's coming from, from, a, a, from a Schmidt trigger HCT inverter. It's not even an AHCT chip, and that's giving a very nice sharp edge. Um, the red and blue lines are coming from these D flip-flops, and the blue line in particular, it doesn't look as great there. I can actually reset and get a different capture and see what that looks like. You can see again, it's typically the blue line. I'm getting, I'm just, I'm, I'm just getting worse edges on that. And the oscilloscope sometimes just renders it a bit weirdly as well. You can, yeah, I don't know. That's an interesting view because you can actually see there are some, you can see other writes happening. That's interesting. I'm aware that the CPU is not going to be able to write to the uh, to, to anything really. I mean, the 6502 CPU it can't, it can't write to anything very quickly. Um, but here you can clearly see that, based on the program I'm running, that's writing about once every ten clock cycles of the CPU. It's an important thing to bear in mind because one of the solutions here is to make the uh, the write attempt here. Oops. To, to make the right attempt here, um, one, one of the solutions is to make the right attempt here get kind of set up at the at this point, but then only actually get committed during the next um, right cycle or the next CPU cycle here, because we can be pretty sure at that point that the CPU is not going to be ready to do another right by that point. I mean, the 6502 writing on two consecutive cycles is extremely rare um, and would never happen for the kind of code you'd be using to write to video memory. So there is an option there. Um, I might consider that as well. Anyway, this is all really non-conclusive. Um, I, I honestly think the next step is going to be to just stick it in a gal and then have it nice and synchronised to the main clock um, and I'm expecting to get really good results from that. But I don't want to do that yet because I am really excited to get the colour back into this uh, this um, whole thing. So um, yeah, if I uh, I've, I've been thinking through how to how to add the RAM and so on to allow me to have more bits for the pixels and have, get the colour back in. Um, got a good way of doing that. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting on with that, and I'll probably do that this weekend as well. So it's just a quick update on the timing issue, so that I can put it to rest for a little bit and then again come back to it later. I wanted to give a short addendum actually on the uh, soft power circuit. Um, I've had that hooked up to this throughout all of this experimentation and indeed through the last couple of videos. It's working extremely well, really pleased that I made that. Uh, this is the Vero board version soldered up and um, it's not the latest kind of... I've, I've extended the design a bit since then and this is the original design rather than the new one but that's fine, it works really well and it's saved my bacon a few times, I think, because while I've been hooking up these probes, I have, despite being careful and trying to be careful, I have on numerous occasions accidentally connected their grounds to the wrong power rail, um, which is a bad thing to do, because um, you end up trying to shove 5 volts through your oscilloscope. Um, 
five volts probably wouldn't kill it. I don't know, but um, it's a, it, the, the, what, what, what's happening there is that it, it, it results in immediately in a very high current flow, and this, the soft power circuit just does its job and turns it straight off, which is fantastic. Um, like I said, I don't know if I'd have broken my scope or not without it, but um, I'm I'm glad it's there, and I've got a lot more confident in in relying on it since then. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. Sorry for the handy cam and pretty, pretty poor audio quality. We'll have to see um, how loud that scope is and things like that. I'm just using the camera's microphone here. Um, but yeah, see you next time.